What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video where I've got a lot to go over on the Corvette. But the first thing I want to do is go over the C5 Z06 wheels and tires, see how they fit onto the C5 coupe and make sure uh, they're going to look good and everything because I'd rather run those wheels on it, frankly, than the factory five spoke uh, or I think they're called Y2K wheels. Let's get uh, this thing up one wheel at a time and swap those wheels out and see what they look like. These are ancient slicks on it. It's really cold out right now, which is a death sentence, which uh, is something I'm ready to take on. We'll go put some fuel in it, see what this thing looks like at the gas station. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be a nice look for it. In a couple more days, this car is gonna be tinted and I'll have the side glass and hopefully the rear hatch glass done as well. I've been driving the heck out of this car. I bought it from my uh, buddy Dave, and this car has been actually really solid. We'll go over this car a little bit more shortly here, but let's get the back of the car up in the air and start with today's video. Be torquing these on the ground. I'm just getting them settled. So I'm gonna put some air in these, make sure these are good, and put the car back on the ground. Ooh, we finally got some meats on there. Now let's see what we got. So the car will settle a little bit. I can honestly do that now, I guess, by rolling it. The stock type tires are off and uh, wheels with the, three, with the 340 tread wear tires that are like hockey pucks. These are also like hockey pucks because they're really old. But anyways, the car is kind of in four by four mode right now. After I drive it, it's gonna settle out quite a bit. Uh, usually there's only maybe an inch or so wheel gap and the thing's just kind of jacked up right now from being literally jacked up. I'm gonna fire this up, go put some fuel in it and we'll take a peek at it at the gas station and see what it looks like all settled down. And hopefully between the wheels and tires, and the tint that's going to go on it this weekend. It's going to be a super good facelift for this car and be a step closer to how I'd like it. Let's fire up the car and get out of here, put on a couple miles, and uh, go take a peek at what it looks like with the new wheel setup. So we made it to the gas station, put a couple bucks in, and the wheels actually fit pretty well. I'm not noticing any rubbing front or back. What I have noticed is that the steering wheel is really jumpy left to right, and it doesn't quite feel like it did with the Sumi models and the other wheels on it. it. must be because they're wider in a smooth tread. But the back came down a little bit. It's not down as far as I thought it was going to go, and we got plenty of clearance inside here, so we're not rubbing. What do you think? C5Z wheels? They look a lot better. These are some tint, it's gonna look awesome. But I'm gonna go put a couple more miles on it and I'll see you guys back at the garage. So I do have all the check engine lights out. The two that are remaining since I've been working on the car, the Stabila Track and Service Traction Control and ABS lights, those have stayed on. And I don't know if it's because the module is bad or because the prior owner said it was tuned out. It's entirely possible, but you know they say that uh, the American Revolution was started in bars. I think in Wisconsin, it'll start at Quick Trip. Yeah, 
You know, the more I drive this car, the more I like it. I really do. So there it is on the C5Z wheels, all settled down. Um, these wheels and tires look way better. The tires have zero forward traction. They turned in pretty good after they got up to, you know, let's say whatever temperature is right now. It's about 45 degrees at the very most. It's probably more like 40. But fronts fit perfect. The rears, there's almost no poke on them at all. It fits nice and flush. I'll zoom in on the rears here, you can kind of see. See if you can tell there. Well, getting funny lighting, but anyways, the rears fit really well also. These are big tires, um, they're cold, <laughs> super cold. I'm not gonna be driving this thing on slicks all the time, obviously, um, even in the summertime, it doesn't make a lot of sense. These wheels could get refinished, but for now, they are gonna serve their purpose, and I think they look awesome on the car, way better than the Y2K wheels, even in their current beat up state. So. Let's fast forward a couple of days. We're gonna drop this car off at Superior Tint and Graphics, a little ways away from my house, and my buddy Isaac's gonna tint the rear window and side windows, and we'll see how those look after we receive the car back from him. Here's her big reveal. We got uh, the car tinted by Isaac at Superior Tint and Graphics, and honestly, it looks pretty good. I got 35% tint on the front windows, same on the back, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. This is kind of the look that I was going for. It's a little bit more, uh, private, I guess you could say. It's also not murdered out because I am getting a little bit older and I don't like having to roll down my side windows to actually back up and use my mirrors. So there's a couple reasons I'm doing this. I'm not trying to get pulled over and whatnot, but it does add quite a bit of character to the car. I think it actually makes the car look way better. For me, this car is getting closer to what I want. We got to replace the two rear tires and the two front tires on this car and make them a little bit more street friendly because slicks are a little bit wild to drive on, especially ancient ones. Um, I think I'll get OEM C5 Z06 tire sizes on here, but that's next up on the car. Get that, get the tire situation all dialed in. Look at that nice seal coating job from H&H &H Seal Coat. All right guys, we got the trailer loaded up at the house this morning. We also swung up by the track to pick up an air compressor. Uh, the one silver Z20 I'm picking up has a flat in the back and I'm not sure if the guy's gonna have one on site. I've got a little one I always carry in the back of my truck. Uh, one of those little handheld battery operated ones just in case, but I don't know if that'll be enough if we got a super flat tire. And I, uh, I would rather have taken a little bit of time now and make the load onto the trailer go easy. So. Today's video is not about the track at all. We're gonna go pick up a pair of Z28s for $500 total. One's in pretty tough shape, the other's in nice shape but completely disassembled. The silver car uh, has a pretty tough history. The green car is a rust-free roller from Oklahoma and I think it's gonna make a great roller as a drag car for somebody someday. But I'm gonna close up the track. We'll see you guys on the road. Gathering. You may feel hopeless
a couple of minutes away from this guy's house that's got the two Camaros. I haven't asked yet if he minds if I do any filming while I pick this stuff up. If anything, I will of course show you guys the cars after I pick them each up. This is about an hour drive from my house. So we'll see what happens. I'm a couple of minutes away. We're just outside of, let's say, we're just past Trego, Wisconsin as you head south down 53. But anyway, I'll go pull into the guy's house. We'll get the silver Camaro loaded up, at least do that. Check out both titles, make sure all that stuff's good. And if anything, I'll get you guys a clip or two of loading the car up and then we'll be taken off back to my house. I would really like to pressure wash this car today and at least see what I've got before it starts freezing out. Um, get the bra off of it and whatnot and see what the front end looks like because somebody may want it as a complete sort of parts car. There's a lot of good stuff on it, but um, overall it's in tough shape. I'll check in again with you guys in a little bit, but overall the trip's gone well. It's just over an hour drive from my house each way, so not too bad. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so here's the car. Uh, this is a 96, I believe. Pretty tough shape overall, like I said, but we'll get the bra off of it, get it on the trailer, and we'll at least kind of get to see what we've got. Looks like the other side's got Bondo on the quarter that's all cracked up, but in here, in particular, it is nasty. Crank windows. Uh, it's not a stripper car, it's got leather, which is interesting. Dash pad's all junked out. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of dingy right now, but anyway, we'll get this thing loaded up and hope we get out of here pretty quick. So we got the car all loaded up and strapped down. I got the windows open. I'm gonna let that sucker air out on the drive home. They're crank windows, so you don't need a battery, which is fortunate. I got the back of my truck absolutely full of parts, from body parts to engine bay parts, brackets, things like that for the orange car that's in the garage behind me. But I'm gonna hit the road. I got another hour or so of drive. I'm gonna actually go power wash this thing first, see what we've got before we park and offload it at the shop, and then we'll come back probably today and get the green car. that out. I took the bra off in the car wash, got her all cleaned up, and there's some front bumper damage as you'd expect. The hood's worn and faded. You will probably get that off with clay bar, but overall the car looks pretty nice. It's actually pretty uh, pretty straight for a silver car. I'll be excited to see what it looks like. I mean, there's damage everywhere, but overall it cleaned up pretty well. I don't know, what do you think? 500 bucks for this car and the green one? I think so far we're money ahead turned out really nice but I gotta go drop this I'll be picking up the other car in the dark uh, by the looks of it at this point so I'm gonna go for a ride drop the silver car off at home I'll see you guys in a little while all right so we are back picking up the green car uh, this is the car from Oklahoma that's pretty clean it was tucked back in the garage here but this is a total roller this is gonna be a good drag car or race car for somebody I got all the parts for the front end the hood Another front bumper, front fenders, two more front doors, pretty much everything in duplicate of this, plus doors. Um, again, like the other one, interior is pretty roached out. But anyway, let's load this thing up, get it back to the shop, and maybe I'll stop by and wash this one as well because it's pretty dirty, but the paint's pretty hatched under it too. So anyway, let's get this one loaded up and out of here.
All right, there we go. The car's all loaded up. I'm losing light here, but in the back, I do have the parts that I picked up earlier. It's all in here. I've got an engine to pick up on another trip. At least another front bumper cover and headlight assembly. You know, whatever this is, the header panel here. I've got at least two of them. A mountain of other parts up in a shed that he's got. And uh, yeah, otherwise, that's pretty much it for now. I'm gonna hit the road. I might even have this car sold. I don't know quite yet, but more to come on this. It's a really clean car. I'll show you real quick before we get rolling. And then, uh, yeah, let's start putting some miles on because I got to drop off the Corvette to get tinted tonight also. So like I said, Oklahoma car. This thing's pretty clean as far as, you know, rust and corrosion go. There's not a lot to be said about it. Uh, the floors and everything, it's all just really clean. So this would be... Sorry, it's kind of harsh lighting, but this would be abnormal for a pretty worn out Minnesota car, Wisconsin cars. It would be. You can check out the trunk area, it's super clean. Look at that, it's like <laughs> still primered. Pretty crazy how clean it is. So, anyway, it's a true Oklahoma car. It's where the title's from. Got the plate. It's like it was last titled in 15. So, anyway, that's about it for this part of the trip. I'm going to hit the road and put some miles on, and I'll catch up with you guys after this car is washed up, too. SS wheels are in pretty tough shape. Uh, looks like they were polished, but more of the cleanliness. Again, not super nice in here, unfortunately. Pretty uh, hashed out, but... Anyway, what do you expect? Both cars for 500 bucks plus it's on other parts, so I'd say it's a pretty pretty good deal overall. RPO code sticker is missing, but it does come back as a V8 car, which means that it is a Z28 for sure. So that's all. All right, guys, we're gonna get out of here. All right, so the trailer's in. I'm gonna drop it real quick because this door is gonna wanna shut on me. But anyways, I got a couple of products here. I'm not gonna be able to film. It's gonna fog over right away, but I got some wheel and tire cleaner. And of course, oven cleaner for the engine bay. I'm gonna clean this up really well. And hopefully when we're all done, we'll kind of know at least what we got to work with. Uh, the paint's not gonna be the best, but it's gonna be clean. So that's kind of the important thing. I'm gonna drop the trailer real quick, get to washing it, and I'll show you guys outside when it's all done. All around here, it's filthy, it's full of cat paw marks and dirt and grime and just years of getting dusty kind of like it would be if it was in a barn so this should clean up pretty good it's going to be green when i'm all done but for now i'm going to drop the trailer get outside and i'll see you guys in a little bit all right i got the car all cleaned up and the uh wheels appear to be have probably were, these were probably polished wheels at one time this might be just plasti dip on it so i'll actually probably clean up and then go back to their silver finish uh, a lot of it came off spraying it but overall, the car looks pretty sharp. The green paint isn't in the best condition, but overall the car is solid. So it's actually really rough. This is a bad repaint on it. They had quite a bit of the car at one point. There's orange peel everywhere, but it is a solid start to a car. So anyways, I got the fenders all cleaned up too. Uh, there's actually damage on a couple of them. There was two, two of these green cars. I believe it's polo green on this, just like it is on the Corvettes, but Anyway, the ones with the silver badges, I believe, were born with the car, and that's what'll end up going back on it. The other ones appear to be damaged a little bit, but won't take too terribly much. <laughs> won't take too terribly much to get things rehung and at least halfway looking like a car again. So I gotta figure out how to get some hardware together for these. They're probably in a bolt bucket somewhere that came with this car, but that's neither here nor there for now. I gotta get this car back home, let things dry off, and hopefully in the next day or two, I'll have a little bit of time to putz with it and maybe even start putting the front end body panels back together. The silver car is we got lights and the starter clicks with the jump pack hooked up. So I'm actually kinda hopeful that we can crank it. I know the guy said they lost the keys, but I see they already started a VATS bypass, or it would be the pass key or vehicle anti-theft system bypass. I see a resistor taped into the VATS plug. And it looks like whoever was monkeying with it already looped on these 96 uh, OBD, I think it's an OBD-1 car. You have to bypass the fuel pump as well. There's two things you have to do to actually deliver fuel and allow the engine to crank. And it looks like those were already touched. So that tells me someone's been in here now. Whether or not they're successful is another question. As far as I know, he didn't really know what was wrong with it. His kid was monkeying with it, and his kid's not around right now. So, 
that is going to be for us to figure out. Might work, might not. We will know pretty quickly. You know, the only wild card is that this engine is seized up. And that's still possible. So, can't rule that out until we actually give her a good battery and crank it here with the jump pack on it and, you know, really see what we've got. It's not firing, it's telling me that there's no fuel probably. So we can see if it'll hit with a little bit of a starting fluid. If anything, I think what's going on is probably the fuel pump is not turning on. So I can put a fuel, my fuel pressure tester on the line set here somewhere, wherever the test port is, looks like it's on the back. We can see if we are or aren't getting fuel pressure. That'll tell me right away. Or what I can do actually is um, put a little starting fluid in it see if it starts and go from there. So, more to come. Here, I'd be curious to see if there is fuel pressure. Um, I'm suspecting there's not for a couple of reasons. But for now, this will at least tell us if it will work, you know, in the perfect situation. All right, let's give her a little sniff here. Okay, so that's telling me we have no ignition. And I will need to look into that. I don't know why that would be. Gotta do some troubleshooting here. All right guys, so we have the extra LT1 engine that came with the two Camaro package on the stand here in the garage. And basically what I'm gonna do is see that this thing spins over and halfway assess what we've got. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually pull out each of the spark plugs. Kind of see what we've got here. And more than anything, I'm going to be assessing whether or not I'm going to keep this engine around or sell it as basically a core for somebody. It is an LT1 with aluminum heads. Uh, came out of a 96 and up Camaro or Firebird. I can tell you why I know that. It's not labeled as such, but one reason I know, I'll show you down here on the bottom of the timing cover, there is a crank position sensor on there and that's only on OBD2 equipped LT1 engines. That is 96 and newer. So. This timing cover here alone is worth about 200 bucks because people retrofit these LT engines uh, through companies like Torquehead, I believe, or they may use an LS coil pack conversion instead of using the OptiSpark distributor, which is a uh, direct driven um, optical sensor used for controlling ignition as an evolution of a distributor, as an evolution of a distributor that would have typically been mounted on the back of the engine through the intake manifold here. You can do a distributor conversion if you get a custom intake cut and have a distributor plate welded and whatnot because this is still a small block Chevrolet. But most people will go through with either replacing the OptiSpark, which is what I suspect might be wrong with the silver car, um, to be determined on that at this point. But nevertheless, uh, what I'm doing is gonna see kind of what I've got as a base core engine here and go from there. I may sell this, I don't need it. I don't really plan on rebuilding it because it's not cost effective to do it with this versus an LS, minus the swap costs involved. But that's neither here nor there right now. I personally like these engines. Aesthetically, I guess. They're pretty cool. They're not as iconic as the tune port injected engines that were um, in here prior in the F bodies prior, you know, in Corvette and whatnot, but I would say 
nonetheless. Last but not least, there's that one. So, I got all the spark plugs out. This thing should spin nice and easy. Uh, I'm gonna get my ratchet on there and see if I can spin this thing 360 degrees all the way around to make sure that we got a free spinning engine. Got some lube in the valve train, some lube in the cylinders, and it's like we are at a 360, but we'll go full cycle here. Make sure everything's feeling okay. So, engine spins over, which is good, but for now, I'm gonna say that's about, that about is what it is. I'm gonna close it up, and I think that might be the end for me with this engine. Probably not more to come on it. I'm gonna see if I can get a couple hundred bucks back for it, and go from there on the silver car. So, that's about it for now. We'll see uh, what happens with this in the next uh, segment of the video. So, basically at this point what we've got is a whole bunch of interior and trim panels for under the hood of these cars, and this stuff is probably ultimately going to get sold on eBay if I don't A, move the green car or silver car with everything, just as an added extra for somebody that wants to buy it, uh, for example. But anyways, the last thing that I'm going to cover on the Corvette in this video is I did get one of these uh, button control replacement sets. This is a Dorman, part number 76849. This is a radio knob replacement set, and you'll find these on eBay saying C5 Corvette, you know, replacement knobs. Uh, you'll notice that Silverado, Sierra Trucks, uh, all sorts of other GM radios are the exact same thing in, that it would be in this unit. So this is going to cross over many other makes and models. I don't know what these all fit. You'll have to find that out for yourself. But in my situation, I was actually just missing the power knob, and for 14 bucks, as the cheapest I found them, I got all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and just swap them all. And that's going to be kind of getting the Corvette dialed in for next year. And uh, I just saw posted today, Autocross Week dates are posted, and I really would like to take this on it. So I'm going to swap these out real quick. I'll show you before and after, and we'll wrap up this section of today's video. Obviously, we got the missing power button, and none of these seem to be split or anything, so I might just leave them. I'm probably just going to install the power button, to be completely honest, so I don't break the new ones and get rid of the old ones. All right, buttons are replaced. We are good to go here. That's all for this segment. We will see you guys in the next portion of today's video. All right, so part of the mess in the garage right now, I'm actually doing a little bit of painting in here and prepping for what would be a bigger electrical project going on. But over in this corner of the garage, everything's cleaning up pretty good. As you can see, I've got a finite line of what color the paint was before painting and after. And probably a lot of it is from having a wood stove in here because of course you have wood smoke. But this is also 10 years old and even from this side to this side, uh, this is much better. So there's a little bit of repair work to do in here and whatnot, but the biggest thing I'm trying to do is make it feel a little bit more sanitary because this garage does need some work. It was pretty gross after being neglected for the last decade, and I'm trying to rejuvenate it in the most cost-effective way possible. So that being wood heat, a little bit of paint on the walls, and we'll be doing the electrical and lighting in here probably this winter. But the reason we're in here today is because I am showing you the update on the green car. Uh, I've got both of the cars for sale right now. Uh, this is a flipper project for sure. But I got all the fender, front bumper, I got the fenders, front bumper cover, core support, washer fluid, tank, hood, struts, cowl, wipers, all this stuff reinstalled and uh, pretty much ready to go to the next guy. So if any of you is looking for a uh, rust free, so to say, roller, uh, this car's for sale and the silver car's for sale also. You can buy both. That's about it on the green car. I'm working in the track garage right now, so I'll do a little bit of a painting montage, I guess, to wrap up today's video. But basically what I'm working on is getting things more sealed up and ready to go for the future of working in here more. And maybe even working on cars in here more throughout the cold weather months because it is a nice place to spend some time. But that's pretty much all I got for today's video. We'll do an outro with a little painting segment and maybe next time I'll give you an update with how things look in here. There's a lot of drywall that should be repaired and things like that from prior damage. But nonetheless, the place is shaping up. So. That's all I got for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next upload.
Say 